noted with satisfaction. The plans for color television started in the late 1960s when Dr. Apollo Milton Obote was president, a few years after television was introduced in Uganda. Unfortunately for Obote, he did not complete his plan as he was overthrown in a coup engineered by his army commander, Idi Amin. At that time, Uganda Television had already acquired some equipment for the transition from black and white to color television. Former UTV manager Agri Awori was part of the team. In 1969, the Pope, Pope Paul VI, came to Uganda and we broadcast his visit live right from Entebbe to Nakasero and wherever he went. But it was through Italian television network, Rai broadcast the Pope's visit, and it came out in color. And a few expatriates and other affluent Africans who had color television were able to see color TV. I remember requesting the president then, Obote, to say, can you talk to the Pope? So the Pope talks to the Italian government to leave this equipment. They had bought the equipment, set it up on Kololo, Kololo and Nakasero to leave us this equipment. They said, no, we can't do that. You know, Pope is head of his own government in Vatican. He has no influence over Italian government. Our remembers that requests for colored TV equipment were sent to different countries. But later, we put requests to various countries one of which was Germany. Germany had assisted us, the Federal Republic that is, had assisted us in providing what they call mobile vehicle units, you know the mobile one. And they sent us six technicians and one producer who trained our people in the use of equipment. These mobile units were actually in color one good thing about the color broadcast, if the equipment has color capability, even the black and white receivers can get the, the picture. But the reverse is not possible. He also says that a number of changes first needed to be made. We had to make drastic changes in preparation for color broadcast. Take for instance in the studio, black and white, you use very bright and hot lights. With the color, you use bright but soft color, I mean the color, uh, light. And then for recording purposes, also the video and so forth. So the difference between color and, uh, and the black and white is essentially technological. Even with all this groundwork, Ugandans could not watch colored pictures on TV. But a few years after he became president, Idi Amin accelerated the process. Amin, as he justifiably called himself revolutionary, uh, he's called supersonic. He moved very fast. And uh, the previous regime of Obote used to worry about foreign exchange, where do you get the money for this, for that. There was a list of priorities as to who shall get foreign exchange. Well, I mean, once he wants something, once he wanted something, he'll get it. He'll tell governor of the bank, I want money for ABCD, and he'll get it. So that helped a lot in establishing color television in the country. He didn't have to wait for it. Secondly, also, he didn't have the niceties of... Uh, Ad, oh, what do you call this? Uh, not, not advertising, whereby we bring in all the offers and whatnot, and made the best winner, made the best offer be taken. No, just I want this one. If it's German, it's German. If it's British, it's British. Hajj Idrissa Mayanjanjuchi, who headed the presidential press unit during Idi Amin's reign, describes how a trip to the U.S. resulted in the completion of a process that had taken nearly six years. We had gone to Chicago. Uh, uh, we had, uh, I think, while we were there, we, there was 
President Mobutu Sese Seko, then we met Muhammad Ali, the, the boxer. And Muhammad Ali, uh, the president, uh, Idi Amin, wanted Muhammad Ali to come and fight in Uganda. But already, Muhammad Ali had met President Mobutu. And uh, they had already discussed and agreed that he would fight in Zaire. Idi Amin said he must, he would attend the boxing match. And he wanted Ugandans to see that boxing match. So he directed that he wanted that match shown in Uganda so that the Ugandans could see and in color. The development was met with joy. People were extremely happy about color TV, especially when they came to functions. You know, it's at a function that you see how people are dressed, different colors and whatnot. That makes a big, big difference. A black and white, not that much. Awari says not so many people could afford these colored television sets. As a matter of fact, we were confined mostly to diplomats and the elite of Uganda. Forty years later, times have changed and almost every homestead has a color television set. In fact, finding a black and white television set is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Television in Uganda has come a long way over the years, but it is still worth remembering how something that is taken for granted now was once such a big deal. Sandra Tinobrio, NTV Tonight. Right.